Aloha everyone and welcome to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host Lillian Kumik and this is the show where we talk about veganism and the plant-based diet. Awesome guest for you today, someone who is no stranger on the show and one of my dear friends here on the island, uh, vegan chef Paul Onishi. Welcome. Good to be back again. <laughs> Aloha, Not Chef. How are you? Very good. Very busy. Yes, I hear you're getting up to a lot of um, new and exciting things here on the island that we do really want to talk about. So mm -hmm. what are you getting up to? Well, I'm uh, teaching a lot of cooking classes mm -hmm. for a Kahi Ornish down to earth. Right. And uh, also at this very moment, we're doing a blind taste test for 200 people somewhere on the island. I can't say where, uh -huh. but what? But I made a vegan um, local style chicken curry. Okay, a vegan. Vegan local chicken stuff. curry. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are people that are going to be passing around little questionnaires to see what the uh, mystery diners felt that they were um, going to be. Awesome. So this group of 200 people don't know that it's vegan. No. And no. you're... You said chicken, vegan chicken curry. What, yes. is, what is it that you're using to mimic the It's a soy chicken? base. It's called uh -huh. soy curls. Okay. And it is a product that uh, is becoming very popular because it has that texture of uh, chicken breast. Incredible. Yeah. And are you dealing with some of these products? I, I believe that you're yeah, now affiliated another, with a distributor another here. Another very interesting uh, situation I got myself into. Very <laughs> exciting, really. But uh, uh -huh. Tell us uh, a little I'm bit a sales, about it sales rep for a company mm -hmm. called VegCo. VegCo. VegCo okay. is a vegan distributor. We have mm -hmm. quite a number of very interesting and innovative products. Great. So my job is to go around and try to veganize chefs that I worked with when I used to be on the other side. Okay, the other side being the... Before, before veganism. Uh-huh. Before so, veganism came and slapped you in the face. More than slapped. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked me over. Knocked you over, yeah. yeah. But, uh, and so how are they reacting when you uh, talk to these chefs that you previously worked with in a different You know, manner? it's not like approaching a vegetarian restaurant or a vegetarian grocery store. Mm -hmm. okay. Because you're talking about people who are very used to and making their money in animal-based protein right. menus. Mm -hmm. So when you approach them about it, they're kind of skeptical because they only get a few bites here and there. Right. Uh, from vegans that visit or local and they really a lot of my friends don't have a clue mm -hmm. and there's still a lot of people that say vegan this or vegetarian this and they use chicken broth right. and they think it's okay because mm -hmm. they've put in vegetables mm -hmm. but uh, I think people are more knowledgeable they're even refusing to say does that have regular mayonnaise or is that a vegan mayonnaise mm -hmm. uh, and so the you know my friends are going well what's a vegan mayonnaise didn't even know was there. Is there mm -hmm. vegan butters or vegan cheese? Right. And definitely there is, and it tastes great. I know. It tastes like the real thing. I mean, yeah. um, we're very lucky here in Hawaii to have a lot of, actually, you know, a lot of vegan um, products here in the supermarkets for anyone to try. And in particular, the, the main, what you just mentioned now, the cheese, mayonnaise, the um, butters, vegan butters, the non-dairy milks honestly if you don't tell people they're vegan i i find it hard to believe they would actually know so yeah. my favorite mm. is a product that i got introduced about mm -hmm. a month ago called natamu uh, natamu N -A -D -A, okay meaning in spanish no no mu from cow so yep. no cow in okay. this nice and uh excellent product I, it fooled me i ate the whole pint by myself <laughs> Uh, I would times. never do anything like that. <laughs> the whole pint by yourself, like while you're watching a really good flick, Smiling like Game the Changer. Whole time or... <laughs> I enjoyed it. Everybody. Yes, um, kind of know how you feel. <laughs> Nadamu, so that is available at Down to Earth. Yes. I believe they do have a range. I am all, always surprised when I go into Down to Earth and look at the ice cream section or when I'm buying it for other people. There's not just one. It's just one. humongous now. There's yeah. such a huge array Consumers of... Consumers um, have so many choices, choices now. now. Just yeah. in the hot dog section, mm. there are about 10 different hot dogs. Mm. It's incredible. 
Um, Chef Paul, you have uh, brought in some photos for us to take a look at. So let's have a look at a few that you have pre prepared. This is a very, very, uh, I would say it's a great product. Uh, we, we demoed this for some of my people I called, called on, and they were very surprised that the gluten-free bread, uh, we did the hamburger buns. I made a mm -hmm. vegan bacon and egg sandwich with veganes, and they couldn't tell the difference. Uh -huh. The bread was soft. It didn't taste like what you call vegan bread, vegetarian okay. type bread. Mm -hmm. So technology has really come a long way. Definitely. And it's awesome that they're also gluten-free because a lot of people are starting to become aware of the fact that, um, yeah, they can't eat products with gluten. Yeah, and amazing, so they're selling amazing texture. Well. And, yeah. and after you toast it, outside gets crispy, inside still it's soft. Still fluffy and soft. Yeah, oh. and it's, it maintains that texture. Nice. Where can we get a hold of uh, some of these products? Well, a lot of them are sold locally here, mm -hmm. uh, but the company I work for, VegCo, yep also has a, a warehouse you can visit there in Kapa'a okay. Quarry. Okay. And, uh, I don't have the address with mm -hmm. me offhand, but mm -hmm. uh, you can, you know, call me on my cell number yes. and we'll get you connected with Yeah, definitely. People. Um, sure. people can call you at your number, which is 808-722-9782. Exactly. And uh, get, a, get a hold of you, not only, you know, if they're interested in the products, but if they're interested in maybe taking one of your vegan cooking classes or demos mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. yeah, hooking up with you yeah. to do I, I some think that's fun stuff. Where a lot of people, they need to be um, in control. Mm -hmm. You can't always go shopping at a vegan grocery store, or eat out at vegan restaurants. Right. You need to be able to do it at home. And Definitely. technology, is a lot, as you know, mm -hmm. allows us to do that now yes. with a lot more control. And the cooking classes are just to show people that it's very easy to use like a vegan egg, for example. Right. Just thaw it out, pour it into a pan. Mm -hmm. You can use vegan butter if you want to flavor it a little more. And the bacon I've tried recently, this vegan bacon, you put it in the oven for 20 minutes. It okay. comes crispy. It doesn't crinkle up. If you kind of back off on the time a little bit, you get that soft texture. Mm -hmm. And we put it in bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. It has that crispy texture. It mm -hmm. tastes just like bacon. See, people would love something like that, and you know all of that sort of stuff you can try here, try here on the island too, or in most countries. Let's take a look at another photo you have prepped for us. Oh, now, this, this, this is, is uh, exciting. <laughs> this is a pretty wild product. comes from comes out of India. Now, the interesting thing out of it about this product is you can see on the right side it says twenty five minutes in hot soup. I know. Which means you can hold it in your hand, and you can see on the uh, above that it says peppercorn, uh, Indian masala, mm -hmm. chocolate spinach. Obviously, the chocolate spoons are for very interesting for people mm -hmm. who do high end desserts. Right. Um, they're a little bit pricey. However, if you have a market that is into innovative things, and after you're done, you eat the spoon. Yes, <laughs> excellent idea. Fantastic, and I I definitely want to get a get a hold of some of those. I've been waiting for them to come to Hawaii. Are they a new product here? It, or? it just got previewed at Down to Earth last Friday, right. I believe. And the other thing that's really a hot topic in town here is the, um, the ban on plastics that mm -hmm. they're trying to push through at uh, 2021, I mm -hmm. believe. Uh, we also carry a product called Birchwood Cutlery. Okay. This is not a biodegradable product. This is a compostable product so in 90 days this product will disintegrate wow. on its own which is a very interesting Excellent. thing a lot of people don't know that hawaii does not have a biodegradable facility so you can't process that so this compostable if it goes on itself mm -hmm. and just throw it in your yard and it uh, turns into mulch wow that's yeah. that's very exciting um and yeah very important to share that kind of information mm -hmm. so Definitely steer away from plastic when you can. And, yeah, use some of these products. What else have we got, Paul? Mm. Oh, these are when I... Uh, a, some the bacon, top two products are, are ones we carry. The, the jerky is unbelievable. And they also sell these uh, carne asada, which is a flavored soy meat mm -hmm. that you can add to any kind of Mexican. Dish. They have about five different uh, versions. Okay. Down below are... Couple of products I found in um, Portland when I went there. Okay. Um, 
the bacon I tried recently are quite a bit better than the coconut bacon that is on the left side. And, um, you know, the cheeses, you know, as you know, you, you being a cheese maker, mm. you really uh, come around. They have, yes. Yeah. Um, chef Paul, actually, you are obviously an amazing chef, but you veganize a lot, a lot of uh, local dishes. So mm -hmm. anyone who's interested in, you know, trying some, trying to work with vegan recipes, this should definitely give you a call and um, take one of your classes. Well, Some of your we stuff had a is good opportunity a couple amazing. of weeks ago before VegFest mm -hmm. Oahu to actually go on TV. We went on TV three times on the morning shows and had people sample the vegan locomoco. Nice. That, and that's that, your like signature dish, isn't it? Well, it's one become that. Them. I didn't yeah. think it was really going to fly, but it's amazing mm -hmm. that the gravy and the egg had people fooled. Mm. Local celebrities tried it, and they said, I could eat this every day. So, wow. you know, that was a pretty good testimony that a lot of people, if given the right texture and the right taste, will follow through. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to convert to veganism no. right away. No. But a little bit here, a little bit there will mm -hmm. kind of help you transition. Yeah, definitely yeah. agree, yeah. How about another one, Paul? What else have you got here for us? All of this looks delicious. This is on my recent trip to... Um, or then mm -hmm. uh, the top that is a vegan Thai curry. And the bottom is a vegan um, Indian restaurant. Unbelievable food. And on the right That's side, uh, this is the vegan ramen from Tane Izakaya oh, okay. here locally. Mm -hmm. And uh, they actually have vegan pork belly <laughs> in their ramen. Wow. It shows the actual fat layers, but it's vegan. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Do you know that Portland was recently voted number, number one, one. Um, yeah. country of the best places to be living in if you're vegetarian or yeah. vegan? Hawaii was voted 35 out of 100 U.S. cities. Portland got number yeah. one, so definitely on my uh, bucket list of places to go and visit. <laughs> A lot of things happening on the mainland, even in mm -hmm. Las Vegas. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I went to a a vegan barbecue restaurant mm -hmm. where they had ribs, fried chicken, um, what's the other one, um, black eyed peas, oh, and, okay. you know, all in a lunch, all vegan. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the limit. I definitely agree. I mean, it's just incredible how far we've come um, making life easier to get onto a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. And after the break, we are actually going to talk about some useful tips on how you can kickstart a vegan uh, lifestyle and plant-based diet. So stay tuned and see you after the break. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Monley and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Welcome back, everyone, to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host, Lillian Kumik, and I'm with my awesome guest, the very famous vegan chef, Paul Onishi. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back again, Paul. Um, we are talking about the vegan lifestyle today and what, what you've been getting up to on the island. Um, a lot of people ask, how do you start a vegan diet or, you know, start eating more plant-based? So when it came to your journey and, it, and you transitioning from the typical American diet, I guess, um, when, how, did, how did you transition? What made life easier? For you and what are some tips you could tell viewers to help them get started? 
You know, I've tried several times in my life over the past years to, to get to where I'm now. And I'm looking at two years that I've, you know, Fantastic. been uh, doing this. It's been hard when you travel because many countries, especially, you know, in Asia, don't support a vegan lifestyle. And so you have to compromise here and there. But um, the products that are available, for example, a lot of, you know, vegans say, well, why do you have to even expose people to meat like bacon and stuff like that? Because it only tempts you to go back. Mm -hmm. However, these transition devices, last year was a, I think it was a $650 million industry just in products right. for sale that way. It's and it incredible. kind of mm -hmm. made people wake up. And obviously around the country, I don't think it's really hit Hawaii yet. But every place they've previewed the Impossible Burger and the alternative burgers, people say, hey, this tastes good, the texture is good, I wonder what else is out there. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's led to people going back to their favorite restaurants and saying, do you have this or that? Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing and, and hearing from my you know, co-workers, constituents, is that I think by spring next year, if you're not in place to transition into that um, way of thinking or at least be open to it, yep. you're going to be buried because those that are doing a veganizing or being a little bit more sensitive mm -hmm. uh, will be ahead of the game and they'll be the ones people go to for alternatives. Yes, I couldn't agree more. I think, I think we're at the, at the stage where it's very um, visible that this is not some fad, some no. fad that just is coming and is going to disappear you know veganism and the plant-based diet is definitely alive and thriving yep. and becoming you know just more and more people are turning to this um diet as a lifestyle so you know you've got to get the options out there in restaurants yeah, I, I definitely agree because there will come a point when people like myself will just refuse to go to regular restaurants you know non-vegan restaurants if there are not options yeah. and um, more and more people are curious and ready to taste as you yeah. said some of these um, healthier dishes. And you know, personally, so. a lot of the, what's been bothering me lately is the fake news that comes out against mm. these um, animal alternatives, you know, yeah. plant-based yeah. alternatives, because they're losing their dollar, dollar yeah. volume. Mm -hmm. They're losing their hold on the market. Mm -hmm. And just, uh, I, I saw the other day, you know, Burger King took off their... Um, vegetarian burger. I didn't even know they had a vegetarian burger because okay. the sales of the Impossible Whopper were so good that it, it just said, well, we don't need to do that anymore. Wow, that's... And that shows that even within incredible. that burger industry, mm -hmm. they're seeing a new product come in there and actually push an old standby right. away because it's gaining so much popularity. Mm -hmm. And then they followed that article with something that they're going to do uh, adding two or three more products, like a Junior Whopper and a Impossible Whopper mm -hmm. with cheese. Okay. Of course, the question is going to be, do they put vegan cheese on there? And are they using plant-based mayonnaise? Mm -hmm. And do their buns have eggs yes. in it? So yes. I think that's all going to happen eventually. Mm -hmm. But you know, they're taking their steps because they want to see who's going to respond to their offerings. Right. And so far, the offerings are yielding a uh, interest mm -hmm. that I don't think a lot of people, you know, banked on. Oh, so well said, Jeff. And uh, you are absolutely right. Like, um, just because, for example, just because it's an impossible burger doesn't mean the whole burger is vegan. This is where you have to be really careful exactly. about whether the bread, as you mentioned, the cheese, the yeah. mayonnaise, you have to make sure all of that's vegan. And more than often, it is not fully vegan so yeah. that's uh, maybe a good a good thing to remember if you are wanting to transition to a plant-based diet well you know in, in response to what you just said our company also has a couple of different uh, ve vegan burgers mm -hmm. that have already answered that question so if someone says well that you know impossible burgers to process right. or you know i don't like all that mm -hmm. manipulation mm -hmm. we have alternative burgers that haven't hit the market yet uh -huh. visibly that are going to answer that question. Fantastic. Have the same texture, mm. that same aroma, mm -hmm. 
and it will transition people into a healthier lifestyle. And you know, it's not like you're going to eat it every day. Right. But it's better than having all the fat, all the cholesterol, mm -hmm. all the high blood pressure, which I had. And the other day I was in a situation where I was at a, um, a restaurant. I ordered a mushroom burger, which I thought was a portobello mushroom burger. Yes. The waitress made a mistake and she gave me a regular burger with, with mushrooms mushroom. oh, on okay. top of it. And because I came late and I had to eat it in front of everybody, I ate it. Oh, no. And, you know, I didn't want to make a scene yeah, about it okay. and, and, you know, draw attention to the mm. fact, well, he's a, you know, yeah. vegan and all this oh, kind of stuff. No. However, I went home last night and that night mm -hmm. and then the next day, because my lifestyle has maintained itself pretty yes. good, my blood pressure was even lower than it usually is. So it was 117 over 72. Okay. Which is really good. I yes. would think it would spike just because of that, because that, okay. you know, that patty. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you maintain that lifestyle, mm -hmm. you have something in motion that has set you on a healthy track. So mm -hmm. even if you are forced to compromise, and you know, part of me just like, mm, mm -hmm. you know, I, I kind of struggle with that socially, mm -hmm. and a lot of vegans do, a lot do. because of the pressure. Yeah, certainly. Um, it, you know, you can't really go into this lifestyle absolutely stress-free, there are going to be times where you're going to be put in a little bit of a oh, yeah. rut and, you know, you're going That's to have to work it out That's why a lot of people fall slowly. off the wagon. Yeah. And in definitely. my classes, everyone has a story like yes. that. New Year's Day, yes. they had to compromise. They brought the chicken dish because at the end of the Thanksgiving party, everybody took home the sashimi that was sitting out there for, right. for four hours. Mm past its prime, mm. but they took it home and they probably ate it the next day yeah, too. But she took home her falafel because mm -hmm. nobody ate it. Okay. And she put it back in her yeah. container. That's kind of sad, but you know, with Thanksgiving coming up in the next couple of weeks, <laughs> I think this is where a lot of people are going to be tested. People who are really, you know, really want to be on the vegan diet, but then they're surrounded by all of these comfort foods that they were brought up eating and brought up to believe were perfectly okay for you to eat. So, you know, don't don't stress out. Don't no. you know? Don't don't let it get to you. If no. you fall off the wagon a bit, it's okay. Jump back on and you know get back to what it is you really want to do, which is no. you know eat a health eat healthier, I guess, and be a healthier. You, you. just reminded me last Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. they ordered a full on meal from one of the restaurants, mm -hmm. turkey stuff and gravy, the whole nine yards. I said, oh my goodness, what am I going to eat? I made a little casserole dish. Mm -hmm. I made a Thanksgiving shepherd's pie. Yeah, awesome. I made my own mashed potatoes from scratch, yeah. used soy milk, vegan butter, mm -hmm. and I layered the inside with seitan that I marinated in sage. It tasted like turkey, had the mm -hmm. texture of turkey, yep. and I'm vegan gravy. And I put it, it sandwiched in between my mashed potato. I didn't say Yum. anything. I thought, well, that's mine. They're not going to eat it because mm -hmm. they know where I'm coming from. Well, people start going through the line and dipped mm -hmm. into mine. And when I went through, it was half gone. Nobody said anything. Yep. They certainly didn't. Mm -hmm. So I thought, maybe it tasted good. Obviously, yeah. So, but don't advertise. More... Just put it out there. Feel yeah. confident. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't advertise. Don't <laughs> go on about what's in it. Just yeah. leave it. Sit it there and watch people um, go for it. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at some more photos that we have. Jeff. Beautiful. I'm guessing these are also from Portland. And the next one, let's have a look at another one. Vegan sushi. Where are, are these at Tane, the Japanese? Now, uh, the one on the right side is a product that we carry called Ahimi. Okay. It is a plant based um, sashimi alternative. Yes. And this uh, picture appeared in Forbes magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, Couple, Beautiful. I think it was last year and before we even got a hold of it and I thought that's not too good you know everybody has it except us but uh -huh. now we have it uh -huh. and uh, it, once again it's how to introduce it to the public right. so you know it's not like walking in the door and saying hey chef I got a brand new product for you mm -hmm. to try I have to literally make it up for them take mm -hmm. them a sample and have them say, hey, this tastes pretty good, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I have to do a, a 
tasting where I go into their restaurant and I work in the kitchen with them. Mm -hmm. And like the other day, I had to make the, the curry chicken curry to be mm -hmm. served for the 200 people for mm -hmm. that blind taste test. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, thank you for what you're doing with this. It's going to be a while, vegan, but I, I, I believe in it. I think it's, it's worth it. Yeah, definitely worth it. Of course, I appreciate everything that you're doing. I want to show a couple of more photos, Chef. This is what I um, have been playing around with vegan spam. And it's made with uh, soy flour, some corn, uh, corn meal, spices, some celery, onion. And you put it in the little the empty cans, boil it for two hours, um, slice, fry, stir fry a little bit, and it tastes exactly like Amazing. the real stuff. The next one is my uh, cauliflower buffalo wings. <laughs> I thought it was chicken. And vegan ranch. It looks like chicken, um, crispy on the outside, mm -hmm. really delicious on the inside, made from cauliflower or healthy stuff. Believe it or not, there's no oil in that I dish. like your grill marks. Yeah. Too. Again, vegan food can be delicious. So if you are looking to start a vegan diet, I did quickly have seven tips that I would like to mention. So the first one, I think you can agree, transition slowly. Yeah. It's not going to happen overnight. I mean, yeah. some people do it like that overnight and have a lot of willpower, but, you know, transition slowly, try some vegan things. Um, and the second thing is find your motivation. Why is it that you want to start a plant-based diet? You know, get, get motivated, watch videos, documentaries, you know, swap animal products for healthier uh, vegan alternatives. Surround your kitchen with plenty of vegan products and healthy foods ready to go. Slowly create new habits, you know, swap mm. one meal a day, make it vegan on a daily basis, keep going and keep things fun and exciting. Like, you know, go to down to earth, try some of those vegan ice creams. <laughs> I do have another one to add to that. Community is very important too. Absolutely. And I've seen that in the cooking classes where, you know, People who feel so lonely in their journey, yeah, they get together with other lonely people mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we have a group of people in the room that are excited to be with each yeah. other because they support, share the same frustration. Yeah, yeah. So. The support um, is important. Chef Paul, we've come to the end of another show. Um, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Good luck with everything and uh, do contact Paul if you are interested in any of his vegan products. I'll see you again next month. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving and aloha. Oh,